Hello everyone, my name is John Hammond. I'd like to show another challenge from Angstrom CTF. This is called Inputter for 100 points in the miscellaneous category. It has 238 solves at the time of recording. It says Clam really likes challenging himself. When he learned about all these weird unprintable ASCII characters, he just had to put them in a challenge. Can you certify his knack for strange and hard to input characters? And we have the source here and we can find it on the shell server there. Um, we can go ahead and download each of these. I will go ahead and hop over to my terminal. Let's make a directory for inputter. Let's get over there. Let's wget that one. And I failed it being in between my double quotes. There we go. Now we have the binary. Let's go check out the source. Let's also download that. Just wget and paste that in here. So we have a C file here, some C source code. You can see, okay, we're just using the kind of standard libraries that we would use with string types. And flag size 128, okay, defined as a preprocessor definition. A print flag is a function just to go ahead and open the flag file and display it out on the screen, good enough. Our main function goes ahead and does some stuff with our output, kind of typically what you'd see for X on it D services or things you'd put in a CTF challenge. It says, okay, we need to verify that our argument count is at least two arguments, or in fact, only absolutely two arguments. If it's not equal to that, it will break, it will return one. And then we will determine, okay, what is our argument? We'll string compare that argument that we supply with that string, which is peculiar. It uses a escape new line, a single quote, a backslash. Okay, so escaping out the double quote and this not printable character backslash x07. We need to make sure that is right. And then if we pass that test, because it'll fail and exit the program if that doesn't work. If that passes, then we'll go ahead and read in from standard input. And we'll read in a null byte, uh, hex1, hex2, x3. Again, escape not printable characters says your input isn't right. And then if those, if we pass those tests, then we'll go ahead and display the flag for us. Okay, so obviously the gimmick in this challenge is being able to supply these arguments and supply this input, um, running it as a program. So I had fumbled around with this for a little bit. I wanted to see, can I actually work with the program whatsoever? Let's go ahead and mark that as executable so I can run it. We need to supply an argument and we need to supply specifically that one that they've supplied. You can't just include these in a, in a string here because that backslash X isn't going to make any sense for the shell. Uh, what you could do is you could try to display that out with Python. So I could use some dollar sign and open parentheses to go ahead and display that as a, a Python or as some command substitution. So the output of that internal command. But I would need to go ahead and use double quotes to specify the input for that Python syntax. So I would have to escape out the double quotes here and then bash would get very confused because of that escaped quotes. We could try and include that, but I, I messed with that for the longest time and still could not seem to get it right. Uh, I figured let's use single quotes and that didn't particularly work for me. Um, again, needing to modify some of the things to include a single quote. It just, I wasn't getting that within bash all that easily. Uh, I thought, well, what else could I particularly do? Checking out the hint. Again, the CTF was really, really generous about hints. It didn't take away points or anything. It says, there are other ways to run programs without using the shell. So I thought, hmm, okay, could I do something with like GDB? Would I be able to open up the inputter, supply an argument, or modify what I'm usually working with? Because maybe I could go ahead and read in that standard input. First, I got kind of sketched out because that check needed to include a null byte. And I was like, well, null bytes are normally what would break a string in a C style string, but F gets actually doesn't particularly care about them. If you were to go ahead and actually read that man three F gets, I think. Okay, there we go. We could actually see this will end up reading a file until it actually gets an end of file like response or a character there. So null bytes it actually doesn't really care about, which is good to know. So what we could do is actually go ahead and use Python to include this. And I tried this. I actually commented this out, created like a modified.c file, modified in that case, apparently. <laughs> so let's use Python to just go ahead and print out this syntax. We'll have those characters, which can't be displayed, right? Because they're just non-printable characters. But I included that as some payload or something as a file for to check out that payload file in hex. You could see those are the actual variables. And I actually have some new lines in there. Maybe I can go ahead and remove that. Um, I would need to import sys if I were to do that. So I could do sys dot standard out dot write. And uh, because I'm using bytes, I probably need buffer dot write. There we go. Uh, and that would need to be actually bytes. So I'd include a B prefix there. Now, if I were to hex edit payload, we don't have those. But we have one null byte because that's actually included. So 
excuse me, one uh, new line character that's actually included. Anyway, if I were to go ahead and compile that uh, modified one that I created, modified.c, now I have an a.out where it doesn't care about the argument. I could just apply anything there and it would ask for my input. Uh, in which case we could go ahead and actually cat out that payload and pipe it in there and it would display the flag, which we would need to kind of create our own dummy flag. And that way it would actually work for us. But okay, we need to still go ahead and get past that argument information. How could we do that? I thought about using GDB, I thought about doing some other things, and I thought, oh, wait a second, I've done something like this before in the previous CTF challenge. This is actually way back to, like, Insomni Hack 2015 for the Smart Cat challenge. I was like, we could go ahead and send some information to this program with something like subprocess in Python. So I thought, let's go ahead and create a little Python script. I'll go ahead and add my shebang line. I'm using Python 3 because that's what you should be doing. So we'll import subprocess, and let's subprocess check output. Go ahead and get the output here. Um, and we could supply kind of as an array or list. Let's run inputter and let's use that string that they needed to actually have included as an argument. I thought, let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Um, let's mark that as a variable and we can go ahead and print that out. Hard part is with using check output, if we actually did get that correct, if it successfully read our input, well, then it would try to read the input. If it successfully got the argument, it would try to read our input and then it would tell me, well, okay, that failed because it returned to status one. But seemingly we were able to get past the argument section. Using check output isn't going to help us. We should go ahead and use popen or process open and we could actually go ahead and go ahead and view our standard out and set that to subprocess.pipe. And we could actually do p.standardout.read. Perfect. And we'd actually want to supply standard input. But first, let's go ahead and see why that would error. It says your input isn't right. Now we can see standard output easily rather than just using check output. We could also supply our standard input because now that we know we got to your input isn't right, we know we actually successfully passed that first test comparing our argument with that special string. Python is, allowing, is actually allowing us to use that non-printable byte that character there and will properly understand these escaped double quotes or single quotes or new line characters. So that's why Python is kind of a better solution for this. Let's go ahead and use that centered in and some Python black is going to try and clean that for me. Now, because we actually have access to that standard input buffer, well, I could use p.centeredin.write and we could supply as standard input to the program, the actual buffer or input that we need. There we go. And now that that's done, we should be able to read what that program would spit out for us because we successfully supplied that. Oh, and we need to actually supply that as bytes because we're inputting with the process in Python 3. It should go ahead and say your argument's just fine and your, um, excuse me, your input is just fine. So it would go ahead and work for us. That's seemingly not working. So let me kind of double check that. I might do include another new line there. Um, we don't need those and let's actually use without standard output because we could still also be able to see it. There we go. Okay. Oddball. Standard out read. Oh, it would just go ahead and display it for us. So we don't need to, we don't need to do that. Great. Okay. So that will work. So we are using our dummy flag now, but we need to do this actually on the server. So on the server, they give us the location and you could access it with the shell or they give you some SSH credentials you can see on your profile page. So I actually have that copied and created for myself. So I can go ahead and run SSH. Actually, let me do that because I don't think I've done that with um, this folder structure. Let's get our username and the password. Team at that and let's go ahead and grab that password. I'm going to use SSH pass. So I don't have to include that, tack P, there we go. Okay, so now I can log in just fine. And let's actually make that a simple SSH script so I can do that for later things, ssh.ssh, just so I can document it and don't need to type that in every single freaking time. Mark that as executable. Wow, let's learn to type, John. Showcasing videos for the people. Now we're back on the SSH server. And the path to that, if we go check out what that challenge is, it says that it is living in problems 2020 inputter. 
So what we can do is we can change directory into that and we can see the flag, source code and everything there, but we can't read the flag. We need to actually use our inputter program to be able to do that, to be able to read it. So uh, let's call that inputter using the script. So let's move into like dev shm and okay, let's create a script for us. So like solve.py. We can use nano because we're on that machine there. We can go ahead and rest that. And let's use the actual specific path. Let's use, um, it was problems 2020 inputter. So we're using an absolute path to reference the binary. And now we could go ahead and mark that as executable and try and run it like so. But it gives us no love. So uh, something that I kind of noticed and realized that it's not being able to actually do this. Let me maybe Python two would actually work just fine for this. Then we wouldn't need the bytes in that case. Oh, it says okay, it did run. It says you seem to know what you're doing. Cannot read the flag file. The problem is it's working out of this current directory, so it's trying to find a flag file in dev shm. If we were to create our own dummy flag again, then it would be able to go ahead and create it. I don't know why this is so slow right now. Now it could read the flag file, but it's in our current directory. And it's just going to give us the dummy flag. So we would need to do this from the actual directory problems 2020. I can't autocomplete even. Goodness. Now that we're in that directory, we could go ahead and run our dev shm absolute path to our script solve.py. And it should be able to give the proper input to the inputter, that program, and then be able to read that flag.txt file inside of this directory. So let me whack enter a little bit to see why it's taking so long. There we go. You seem to know what you're doing. And it spits out the flag. So that is that. That is actually using Python to go ahead and ma manipulate and modify and actually supply arguments that have some special characters in there uh, alongside the argument and the input, using it with standard input, etc. So... Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you didn't... Um, sorry. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and put our real flag in here now that we know that we have that saved and we can move our ape script to like a simple get flag script because we know, hey, that is what we could actually do. And if you wanted to, we could go ahead and take note inside of our get flag script and say, hey, um, copy this into dev shm or temp and then use the absolute path to the binary, run the program from the problems 2020 inputter directory so it can properly read the flag. And then just for our own sanity, we can save the flag there. And you would be able to submit that for 100 points. And uh, that's that. So, All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press that like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button twice so that way I know how much you hated it. And subscribe and comment and do the whole YouTube algorithm thing. I'd love to see you guys on Patreon, PayPal, Discord, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, etc. All right, I'm going to end this video. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.